Hi, my name is Brian Trubeck, and today I want to talk to you about thermometers and how thermometers aren't always thermometers and how a fish tank can compromise the security of a multi-billion dollar corporation. In this case, we're talking about internet enabled and connected devices and how this thermometer in this case actually connects over a network to a control system, much like a mini computer that has several other IO and connections into the environment for monitoring the fish tank. That device also then is inside of the corporate network. And so with it being on that corporate network via Wi-Fi, it now has and shares the same network with the other items inside of that company's environment. So let's look deeper in this device. As this device is created, we look at what's inside of it. This device, believe it or not, it has thermometer software. That's the software it's intended to write. That's what the manufacturer created this portion up here. But they didn't create the whole device and all the software on their own. So it also has a web server. This web server is you know, a component that can come from open source software, from a third party library, a uh, number of sources, but they didn't craft that. Then this device also has software configuration. So to control how the device is running and what it can connect to. And what it can connect to are things like email systems and alerts to be able to notify about the fish tanks, water, temperature, food, and, and upkeep of the fish. All of that is then built on an operating system. These components are also open source or third party or from chip manufacturers, the silicon itself, providing portions of this with silicon that they're gonna buy provision and put into that system. This is gonna create a lot of surface area for TAC in the IoT supply chain. When this device ships, it's gonna to come to market and be delivered to many different types of companies that are gonna use this in different ways. And as these thermometers are coming into things like hotels and corporations and, and places that have these industrial, um, industrial uses, each one of them has a different network footprint. They have a different environment for how they're deploying these things. Nobody's the same. And so how they deploy these things into their networks and how they use these things inside of these fish tanks all is gonna impact that network in that environment. So let's talk about Digicert and PKI. Public key infrastructure. So Digicert is going to provide PKI that allows the casino, in this case, to have a PKI, or it could be the manufacturer, the person building this. And that PKI can do a strong cryptographically secure identity through public keys that can be shared back to the devices. The devices can create a private key. They can use a public key in the same way to get signed ultimately from the casino and pulled back onto that device as a digital certificate that can be ultimately then used as its identity. And so that identity allows this device, this device, to be provisioned into that network in a way that it can be revoked from its access controls. It can be blacklisted. It can uh, ensure the integrity of software going on to it, and it can manage how it's encrypting and connecting data back into this environment. So let's see how that would impact this attack, because this is a real attack, a fish tank used in a casino to compromise the network of a high roller database uh, to gain access to private and personal information. So as this thermometer is communicating with this device, PKI on the device for encryption of the communication. PKI on the device, both ends, for the integrity of that device, ensuring that the software coming onto that device is the intended software and is executing and updated and patched as appropriate. Then the device itself, as it's authenticating to the network through its device identity, needs to uh, use PKI to access that network and do so securely. But that's not where it stops. 
as you come into the manufacture of this device, the responsibility of the device manufacturer is very interesting because as they got all these components and provisioned them into this device, they need to ensure that the web server is, has integrity of operation. It's updating properly, it's secure. They need to sure, ensure that it's using SSL, that it's using encryption, uh, and it is positively encrypting everything that's coming back and forth, that the software configurations are encrypted and stored so that somebody can't gain access to the device and now breach the network from other areas because they have access to configuration information, that the email server and emails that it's sending those also are encrypted using secure authentication credentials. Uh, and then ultimately the OS itself being signed cryptographically and ensured that that is a, a strong, stable unit of a device that's reaching the supply chain, coming into the hotels, into the businesses, and then landing into those hotel networks, those business networks, and ensuring that it can't be used as a launch point for an attack to get other things inside of an environment, as many of these IoT uh, attacks are. So as you're looking at the fishbowl of security for IoT, consider PKI as a solution for your problems. Hopefully that's some food for thought. There you go, little guy.